Information from the ECI service coordinator and my parent advisor were pivotal. It, they know where to find the resources that we need. They couldn't tell us, oh, you should definitely do this or you should definitely do that, but they were able to direct us toward whatever it was we needed to be able to make the decisions on our own. It's As a parent who has a special needs child, you become so dependent on that service coordinator and that parent advisor that you need them to have that information for you when you're ready to receive it. The most helpful, they empowered us. They taught us how to teach our child. They didn't come in and take him to a separate room and teach him how to work with them. They came in, sat us all down, and taught me how to teach my son. They taught me how to speak up for him and in behalf of him. They prepared me for what to possibly expect at our meetings, working with the school district, what to expect from people in the community when they see him and ooh, what's that thing on his head and when they see him talking with his hands, they empowered me and that was huge because having that sense of I can do this is something that will stay with me, that I can pass on to him and he'll be perfectly successful because of that. When there was a time when I was a little unsure and I wanted I was concerned about my son I had a lot of questions and things but the parent advisor was wonderful really supported me a lot gave me a lot of, of helpful advice you know something about you know somebody I can ask to somebody I could depend on and support me and I didn't feel all alone so I really liked that I think my husband and I are very blessed to have found the ECI uh, coordinators and parent advisors that we have had um, I think they've been instrumental in impacting Kate's life in some of the most amazing ways that I don't think we would have ever been able to do without them. Um, probably the first and foremost, the biggest thing that I can know of is the fact that uh, our parent advisor had stressed the importance of learning how to be how to accept Kate's condition. And one of the things that she had given us was um, some links to some online uh, chat groups of other parents who have children with the same problems. And I had actually gone online and, and looked and read a little bit and joined some of these and luckily had found about, out about the fact that there was a completely new and different uh, uh, ear reconstruction technique available out there and um, we've kind of uh, looked into that and we're actually going to be able to restore Kate's outer ears and reconstruct them at a very young age using this new technique. The other things that uh, the parent advisors in ECI have been able to help us with is just making sure that we uh, just stave off any kind of potential problems by looking at them very early. You know, we didn't understand the need for an occupational therapist for Kate. You know, we said, well, all of her limbs work fine. She has a hearing problem. And we didn't understand long term that if we could just make sure that all of her motor gross and fine motor skills were working well as a young baby, that she would be able to focus more on language later on and not have to worry about two problems as opposed to just one. Um, so, you know, the ECI coordinators and the parent uh, advisors have really helped us uh, get in contact with some amazing uh, community resources and uh, helped us uh, find out about a whole new world of, of uh, different pa parents and um, medical technology that we would have never known about. Um, beforehand and you know I think about myself and my husband and we're both professionals we are very educated and you know we were constantly on the internet um, when Kate was first uh, born trying to learn as much as possible about all of Kate's uh, problems but and we probably would have met with the surgeon the best surgeon here in Dallas we would have probably gone through and uh, used the standard ear reconstruction te um, techniques and she would have probably had her ears reconstructed <clears throat> when she was nine or ten. But because of the information that we had received via ECI and our parent advisor, we found out about this new technology. Kate's ears will be completely reconstructed before the age of five, before she goes to kindergarten or first grade, before she really starts having um, memories about these surgeries. So Kate's ear reconstruction and all these difficulties will be really something that happens to Bob and I versus Kate. My uh, parent advisor, Teresa, she's been very, very good. 
She's been so helpful to me and my family, um, giving us all the information that we need, but giving us that room to make our own choices. She gives us, you know, both sides, good and bad, and leaves it up to us to make the decision. So she, you know, the, our parent advisor has been very valuable to us. Yes, I'm fully, I'm fully grateful with his teachers. And they tell me to do something that is teachable to my son. We apply it to me and my wife. We take time because he's still a little kid, a little baby to me, but I'm more concerned about him because of the hair loss. And it's real, I don't want him to go through life, you know, the feeling where I'm handicapped, but I, I need this and I know you got to be dependable also on yourself. And I'm grateful for that.